Hello, hi, Miniano. My name is Namumu and welcome to my channel. Today is the fifth episode of Books and a Beat. That's a series that I run on my channel where I review African literature, usually in a makeup look inspired by the cover of the book and sometimes an outfit, most of the time. Today, we are talking about the sex lives of African women and I have a physical copy. <laughs> So yes, The Sex Lives of African Women, written by Nana Dakwa Sechiyama. So a little bit about the author, she's one of the two people that is behind, she's one of the two people that are, she's one. English is hard. She's one person in the pair that runs Adventures from the Bedrooms of African Women. I think I discovered that blog on Twitter maybe in the mid 2010s. The blog was a pivotal way for me to learn about sex in African context, especially considering that a lot of us growing up aren't told a lot about sex, things related to sex, spoken to very frankly about sex and everything that's around it. The book details the experiences of many different African women. Um, like young, old, across the spectrum of gender and sexuality, different ways that we all experience womanhood. And for me, the most important thing it did was to highlight that there is such a wide breadth of experience when it comes to gender and sexuality. And this is compounded by just our difference cultures and how different cultures look at sex and relationships. It gives a wide range to the nuance of sex and everything that we as African women are taught and are not taught about it and also follows people in their journey to discover more, to understand where they are at at that point in their lives what they are allowing themselves to want more of. Today's look is um, a cut crease so I have like some orange on the periphery of my eye <laughs> why am I so there's some orange outside my eye and then it's bordered by a dark red there's a little pink on the inside and the eyeliner is black but then it's a dark like I put dark green eyeshadow on it so that it would relate to the green on the cover as well um, I have an orange dress on. I don't know if it'll show up as orange in the video. The necklace and the earrings are supposed to correlate with the pink on the cover. So this book is a little different because it's not one that has characters for me to focus on. The book is divided into three themes and even though the themes are pretty defined from each other, I find that they crisscross because the stories are of a didactic nature and the lessons that they demonstrate relate to each other. The themes are self-discovery, freedom, and healing. I'm just gonna talk about each theme and like the little things within them that really solidified them for me. You are absolutely welcome to grab it and read it for yourself because I think these are very transformational stories. And no matter where you are in your understanding of sex and how you relate to sex, it's a very powerful thing for you to look at the accounts of women who have been through a wide variety of experiences, who are living through a wide variety of situations and are making it work. The first theme was self-discovery. With self-discovery, there were so many different layers to that it's like one of the subjects was talking about how sexuality and spirituality are two sides of the same coin for her and that was interesting to me because like in our religious upbringings that's a, like the spiritual side of things i guess for a lot of african women the coexistence of sex and spirituality is a very a difficult thing it's such a struggle to be able to frankly speak about the things that you want when everything that you are thinking about is 
overshadowed by a canopy of what is spiritually right. There was another story that talked about having multiple partners, like an ethical, non-monogamous situation. And I think that story for me blew the expectations of what is a typical African marriage out the water. It made me think of the different ways that communal support can be achieved. And some people will not agree with that being a thing that you should do, but it's working for somebody, so who are we to judge? There was also a story by a disabled woman who was navigating the dating scene, having sex as a disabled woman, the different ways that men react to her body, to her condition. And I think that it's just, it's another layer that we don't really afford the disabled people in our communities. I think society as largely able-bodied tends to reduce disabled people to their disabilities without understanding, acknowledging, and honoring the fact that they are whole people with the same breadth of emotion and experience as everybody else and must be treated with the same respect. And this account made it much clearer to me that that's a thing that we need to work on, like across African context. Another thing with self-discovery was just Acknowledging that we are taught that sex is such a strong connector that you must only use with people that you are in a lifelong commitment with and how because it is highlighted as such a strong connector we are also encouraged to stay in situations that are less than ideal because of everything that comes in that package. The self-discovery here would be understanding that we are socialized to think like this and doing the work to shift away from that kind of thinking. The next theme is freedom. And I think that is mostly in relation to freedom to feel the wideness of everything that there is to feel and freedom to think as you want about your body and what you do with it. Because there are so many ways that we are socialized, even when you don't quite realize that you have been socialized to think a certain way, it's there. Like it's, unless you're doing the work to actively dismantle it, it's inescapable and it will continue to show up in all the places that you are marking as sacred. And also the freedom to just really admit to yourself that you're having bad that this is not what you want and that's just what it is because there's so many ways that you can make excuses for just having shit sex like no don't do that tell your partners that they're not it's not doing what it needs to do so let's 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 do better as a people hmm? to make sure that everyone's enjoying themselves and there are a lot of body-based stories about giving yourself permission and leaning into the freedom to feel your desires to safely practice your desires to lean into your transformations your changes your evolutions and be okay with the fact that you are at many different places at the same time there was a particular story about a woman who had gone through um fgm and like female genital mutilation and she spoke about how the experience made it difficult for her to trust women and i think that relates to freedom in the sense that it took away that safety to feel free among like people and just took away her freedom to feel safe within a community that should have been providing her safety but instead was the community that was immediately responsible for her harm. Remotely, we know that it's the patriarchy and patriarchal norms that are held over women's heads in general across the world. The third theme is self-healing. I think what I found with most of the stories is that they were leaning more towards abstaining from sex 
or just the decentering sex in their lives to focus on other things that they felt would give them more return, more fulfillment. Another one of the stories looked at the complexity of racism and misogynoir and how that works out in a country where the imperialist strategy was assimilation. It's just you're told for the longest time that in order to be good you have to be like these people and that seeps into every single crevice of your consciousness it touches everything and so while you are doing the work to be more socially conscious it, you also have to be aware that that programming has seeped into your desire and then you need to decolonize i think the part of the theme that would be most relatable from everybody is that we all have to heal from not being given fully nuanced, relevant conversations about sex by our parents and guardians. So many of us were introduced to sex through violent means. And it doesn't have to be violent, blah, blah, just violent in the sense that you didn't want it, but they did it to you anyway. There's so many women across the continent and in the diaspora who are healing from those kinds of sexual encounters. and it's so difficult to do that in societies that tell you that you are bad and you are wrong because somebody did an awful thing to you as usual i tried not to say too much about the contents of the book because i think that it's important that you read it yourself and you place the things that i'm saying onto the things that you're reading and it's even more so important with this book so if you haven't already i hope you're able to grab a copy and read it and just really have some frank conversations with yourself and with the women around you about the sex lives that you are all living or not living overall I appreciated the book, just the many, many different stories and the look into the lives of many different African women on the continent, across the diaspora, because we are many, we live in so many different places and we experience the same things, but the factors that kind of color them are so different and it's important that we acknowledge each other and we see each other and we support each other across contexts okay that's all that i have for you thank you so much for watching for commenting for liking um for sharing you're welcome to subscribe you're welcome to take a look at some of my other videos thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one